up. It was brought to my attention yesterday that JCS uploaded a new video. I am a guy who spent four years paying money for a criminology degree he barely uses, but I use it for this one instance alone, which is watching true crime with you guys. This does involve legitimate crimes and sensitive topics. So if you're uh, prone to being upset over certain things, but uh, you might want to leave for an hour or so, if that is you, most of you are here because you have an interest. So apparently there is a call during this video of like the actual crime taking place uh, and you can hear the victim and we will probably be skipping that because that is something that I personally do not like seeing nor hearing. So that's a line I don't like crossing personally. So let's do it. This is going to be called Sarah thinks she's going. Sarah literally thinks she's going home later. And once again, this is by JCS. Is this the part where I skip? This is just her. Okay, I think you're right. There's one where it's not just her, I think. I don't know. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 4748 France Court. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. Okay, send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. Casual stuff. Fire risk. Just tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and I put him in his case when we were playing, like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. Okay, is he hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. He was in a suitcase. Yes, and I fell asleep. Right, is he breathing? No. Some of you might recognize this one. Back for I, you, did. Okay? I did. I did. I tried giving him CPR. Yeah, okay. okay, listen to me. Lay him flat on his back. This is a fairly okay. unique case. I want you to lay him flat on his back for me on the floor. Ooh, gotta turn off okay. alerts. Thank you for the 15, though. Okay, man, that's fine. We're still going to do compressions on him, okay? Get back from our Antarctica. Put your hand on his breastbone, right in the center of the chest. Yes. Put your other hand on top of that hand. If I look at him, you can tell. Okay. Ah! Please! Okay, he just gurgled. Okay, listen to me. Place the heel of your hand right between his chest, right between his breast bones. Yes. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Yes, we did. want we want to pump his chest to me hard and fast twice per second. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Open now. Oh God, why is this in like the back of my left ear? Oh, let me move the captions. My fault. Oops. This is 42-year-old Sarah Boone, who you just heard on the 911 call a few seconds ago. Her boyfriend was 42-year-old George Torres Jr., who she locked inside a suitcase the night before, ultimately leading to him dying of suffocation. Sarah's explanation is that it was a totally unintentional and Red unforeseen arrow. accident, but what she's completely unaware of at this particular moment is the fact she recorded two videos on her phone last night, the first of which was taken at 11.12 p.m. and shows her laughing at George while he's zipped up in the suitcase. But George isn't laughing. He's asking to be let out and repeatedly stating that he can't breathe. The second video was recorded 11 minutes later showing the same thing, except the suitcase was flipped over and in a different area of the apartment. Sarah is both unmistakably and heavily intoxicated in these videos, which may explain the fact she didn't delete them. It would be safe yep. to assume that she has no idea the video exists. don't show it. I don't know if yes, they're going to. This kind of might be she becomes aware of their existence. But that might we first be have why to acknowledge how this episode was even the episode possible, got removed and that originally. would be the Law and Crime Network. They sent us the uncompressed documents that comprise this video, and almost every case we have covered or will cover is already available in its raw form on this channel, which Whoa. includes the two main items of public record in the case of Sarah Boone, starting with the body cam footage, which is right where we left off. Hello there. That's awesome. Is it a re-upload? Uh, he's done this one before, but it got removed from YouTube when he was getting like absolutely destroyed by demonetization stuff. Um, so I think he, I mean, obviously I think he re-uploaded it, but I think it's because of, um, I think it's because he has other footage to use. And I think the suitcase video was what got his channel, like what got it removed. Cause I don't see it anywhere on here. So. Okay. 
tried to play hide and seek, right? Okay. So he gets in the suitcase. Okay. Who is this guy? That's my ex-husband. My former husband. How did he, did he live here with you guys? No. I called him over here. Okay. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Here, let's talk in private, okay? I called you guys. All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. Doing puzzles. That's all that happened. Okay. Okay. Here, let me fill this deputy in, okay? Please, may I have my Dr. Pepper? I am oh, so cut mouth right second. now. It's on the counter. I can't move yes, anything from out of the house. It's <laughs> true. Like, I'm, here, I want you to sit down because I don't want you passing out. This is probably a lot for you to deal with, right? <laughs> great spot. Great pause. Um, they can't. That's true. They can't remove stuff from the house because it is the crime scene. Does anybody know the uh the term for if a police officer were to remove something from the crime scene? Tampering with evidence? Not. Not. No, that would be different. Tampering with evidence would be like taking something directly involving the crime and moving it or putting it somewhere, anything like that. Obstruction of justice would be finding something in the crime scene and getting rid of it, knowing it would stop the crime from being solved, stuff like that. It'd be directly getting in the way of the crime being solved. Yeah, it's a doctrine. So there's a thing called the poisonous tree. It's like the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. And essentially, if a an officer goes into a crime scene pre-warrant and takes something that could be considered evidence for the crime scene, it was acquired illegally without a proper warrant. Um, so if they don't get a warrant to go in the crime scene and take something, um, if they just go in there and grab something and move it and get rid of it, especially if it's important to the crime, it basically could make the entire crime scene inadmissible in court because they were, they acquired it illegally or without the proper documents. It could ruin an entire uh, And I don't know if she knows it or not. She might know it on purpose and that might be what she's trying to get to have happen because you could argue that her DNA is on that Therefore, the DNA like matching with the suitcase could be an important solvent. And because they took the, the can out, you could say they could take it out. They could have taken it out for evidence. And you could argue that because they took that can out, they cannot take stuff from the crime scene and put it into court for that exact reason. I don't think she's that smart, but that that could be a thing a defense lawyer could actually bring up. Water, okay. The officer then they, talks to the Sarah's police is smart enough to not do that, though. 1130 is when I start calling to find out supposed to be her day. He referred to the fact that Sarah was meant to have custody of their son today. She's generally not very good about always doing it. She they called back and said she was still there, there or she came back. Um, so I was calling to find out if she was going to be getting him or not today. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. Got over here, told her she needed to call 911, get somebody over here. Okay. And then uh, basically she said she needed to go outside, have a drink and a cigarette. Thank you. But um, really I called her initially. Give me one second, okay? He's currently on parole because of it, so... Um, because of domestic violence with her? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. He explains that George has been arrested for domestic violence multiple times against Sarah, and that Sarah's literally bailed him out every time. I, I don't know what it is. Oh, she's mm. getting water from this tap. She's probably going to pass out on us. Okay, well, listen. The police officer asks the ex-husband to stick around for a little while longer. She then gets a notepad and returns to Sarah to collect more information. At some point, you put him in the suitcase? No, he got in the suitcase. So okay. he thought it would be funny to be put in the suitcase. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to joke with you and I'll zip you up and make him, you know, squirm a little bit, whatever. Misuse of chain of custody slash evidence, is that it? No, so um, chain of custody is the pathway evidence takes to reach admissibility in court so taking something from the crime scene wouldn't be disrupting chain of evidence disrupting chain of evidence would be like a cop submits something in a police report or submits it into evidence at a district and an officer knows that like say his friend is the one being accused of the crime so an officer goes into the evidence locker and takes that evidence and doesn't every time a, an officer goes into the evidence locker to either submit or take something for evidence like out of evidence in terms of like for a court case or for an interrogation or stuff like that they have to sign something at the front in order to get approval to take it out that way there is like an actual paper trail of who took what out of where in case something were to go missing obviously it's not foolproof but like if an officer were to take something or submit something into the evidence room without it actually being like logged they would be breaking chain of evidence and there's like pers people that they have to be put in there's people that have to be like given to there's like people that have to document it stuff like that the lack of following the proper chain of handing off evidence is how you break chain of evidence whatever it is but then i fell asleep 
I fell asleep. Where was the suitcase? Right where it is. Right down there. Yeah, exclusionary yeah. rule is another yeah, good way of talking about the it poisonous tree we doctrine. About it. Okay. And then I fell asleep. Where did you fall asleep at? Upstairs. I just totally so forgot. you began to do CPR on him? Yes. From yes. About what gurgled. time this morning did you gurgled. start doing that CPR? No, it was the afternoon. And it, like, air was coming out and he was gurgling, but mm -hmm. I could just tell by looking at him. But you knew how to do CPR, you were doing that on your own? Yes. Okay. I want you to sit back down because I don't Can want Can I you... have one more sip of water, please? Yeah, go, go. Can I have a cigarette, please? Ma'am, I can't take anything out of the house. It's on the back porch. Nope, all of it. It's secure, okay? The officer then confirms the ex-husband will be taking custody of the child. And Smart. the child is in school right now. He's not here with you. No, 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 no. He's okay. in school. Okay, he's in school. What, how old is he? This will be a fun one. He is nine. <laughs> he's third grade. I can't even start with how you would explain <laughs> something like this. Okay. Uh, the ex-husband leaves, and the officers wait for investigators to arrive. Not right now. We can't have you go and get anything. Why don't you? Not a single shade? person here has a cigarette. Hey, Sarah. Did you get enough water? Uh, no. If you want to stay seated, don't. I don't want you getting lightheaded. So remember, I said the detectives were gonna come out and talk to you and go from there. They're here. They're gonna ask you a few questions and then go from there. Okay. okay. All right. All right, Sarah. My name's Chelsea. My partner Scott. They Poor, ask Sarah what happened. Poor kid. No. Um. I don't know about poor kid. I feel like this dad and that kid's dodging a bullet here. Given she's committing a crime, um, he's going to be able to argue full custody. And she's going to have, like, legitimately no access to him. So, I mean, it does kind of suck to not, like, probably grow up without a parent. But, yeah. Given the parent. And he was laughing about it, too. Mm -hmm. To zip him up in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my I camera. And fell asleep. Um, I don't know what happened. Okay. After you zipped them up, did you move the bag around the mess with them at all, or you just zipped it up and walked away? I both were laughing about it, but I went upstairs and I fell asleep. Okay. I'm afraid for my life. I want you to know that. I'm afraid for my life. His family has never liked me. Have you called any of them? She's just saying um, shit at this point. His daughter just today. No, I mean, like, about this. Does no. Anyone know? Okay. So They're going to kill me. Okay, well, Do they live local? Yes. They're down the road. They're going to kill me. The detectives reassure Sarah that she's not about to get murdered and then go in to investigate the apartment. Just stay seated, okay, Sarah? I know you're panicking, okay? Just relax. We'll come to talk to you. We'll keep checking on you. This police officer was brilliant. Her temperament was perfect for the situation. The investigators yeah, simply asked Sarah to stay somewhere else for the night and to come to the police station the following day with any questions she might have. Idiot. Sarah stayed with her ex-husband, then showed up at the sheriff's office the next day at 3.51 p.m. with an entire handwritten page of questions, the first of which was about when she's getting back her phone. I'm going to have you sit the green chair. Doesn't oh, yeah, I didn't even bring it up. Uh, idiot. So, fun fact, you do need a warrant to search a phone. So they probably got a warrant. Given the fact that she was literally at the crime scene, even if it's an accidental death, which it's not in this case, they're still going to investigate into her because she was there. They're going to make sure it was an accident. Um, so the first thing they're going to do is look into everything she has. And uh, phones don't delete shit. I don't know how many times this has to be said. If you do something with your phone, it stays there. Just because you hit the delete button doesn't mean it leaves. Um, there's a bunch of other ways to say what it is. It's microdata. It's, um, there's a few other ways to say it. Basically, your phone deletes it mostly um, and leaves the smallest trail to basically be recovered via nerdy shit in which uh, that can be done at any point with the phone. Uh, so with the same phone, that can be done at any point, even months after you delete it. So your data never gets fully deleted. There is software to recover all that. Same with Snapchat? Yeah, probably. I would imagine because your phone needs to store some image of that natively when you send something in order to, you know, what about factory reset? That I don't know. I'm going to assume no. I'm going to assume factory resetting doesn't save you there. It's possible, but like I said, this data is literally microscopic in terms of size. So they have, they lose nothing out of like just keeping it like stored. What about breaking the phone? I mean, yeah, if, they, if you don't have the phone, that's obviously going to stop them from looking into your phone. But say you use Snapchat. Snapchat has a server. Snapchat saves. They say they don't, but they do. Snapchat saves data. So... 
you know, they might be able to like go through the company you used to recover that sort of stuff. Like imagine you made a Facebook post saying you were going to be somewhere that night and then you killed someone there and then you were like, shit, I told people where I was and you deleted that Facebook post. But there was an eyewitness saying that you were there and somebody who followed you on Facebook went to the police and said that person said they were there yesterday. So they go to Facebook, who is the worst about keeping information, and Facebook gives them everything they need, including your deleted post. Good example. Appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am. Sarah takes out her page of questions, which the investigator semi acknowledges, then brushes off. Um, page of questions. So I brought, I studied. Um, he received his autopsy. So I plead the fifth. I'm going to read you your rights again. Because I guess I'm going back I'm, down here. Have to talk about Actually, that. I can just. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. And do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Sarah has no idea what just happened. This morning we went to his autopsy. She got read her Miranda rights, so she literally got told that she could... She basically got told she's a suspect, <laughs> but she's too dumb to realize. <laughs> um, and... Anybody who understands, which nobody does in America, would know immediately that they're being questioned uh, the wrong time. So he had... But they're being so questioned for a good reason. Um, he had... Uh, oh, gosh, um, that hurt. He had a cut near his, like, lip. We could see... We could see his... Um, his mouth was a little, uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. Forensics have since proven that George sustained his injuries the night he died, and he didn't have them before entering the apartment. I, <coughs> Weird. He fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. Oh, the and captions are back off here. Okay. running into the wall or the hall tree. Okay. So why? Okay. The investigator details further injuries, including a contusion on his body. All right, there's captures through the body cam. Like they, they, they occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post or that occurred a week ago or two days ago, three days ago. They definitely occurred, you know, the night leading up to when he was... In all degree. honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. I have no idea what it is. No okay. idea what it is. We had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch, having wine, and smoking a couple of cigarettes, and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play, mm -hmm. and listen to music. That's why. <laughs> she had all night to set this up. Which Who is this, issue. a toddler? Know, she could have designed this entire scene of events from scratch. There is a 12-hour gap between the timestamp on the video. Is like, Who the hell is a middle-aged woman and says that we went inside and played? Play? What the fuck? <laughs> the moment police showed up on her doorstep, which is plenty of time to assemble what looks like a very pleasant scene of events that in no way precipitated a drunken act of revenge that ultimately led to murder. Nobody got out of sorts. This, this is what's mind-blowing to me. Like, I don't... Okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. He also had, um, like, on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising, um, and, um... On like his head and his skull. I have no idea. As if something hit him. I consider have not for touched him. Trauma. I have not touched <clears throat> him. I have not touched him. I have no idea. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We We've played had hard. Good days lately. It's been good. Like I don't even know where this is coming from. <laughs> The interrogator now brings up Sarah's He's last dead. call to police, reporting domestic violence. He said a month ago he hit you with a curtain rod. Yeah, with a curtain rod. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. What do you she mean you don't know where this is coming from? He's dead in a suitcase. Like, we've been good. I don't know if, like... Bro is dead. The last time he got That's out of where jail. it's coming from. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes. What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? The probation officer? Oh, no, you said you guys have been good. What's your definition? I've been good. good. I don't yeah. think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talk to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I flee, I go over there. So... Sarah is detailing possible motives for retaliation. Routine procedure would be to keep her train of thought locked on this element, provide encouragement and understanding while inquiring further into the suspect's grievances with the victim. The only problem is that the lead interrogator really, 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 really doesn't like Sarah and abandons the task of pretending to, which makes this a significantly flawed yet remarkably entertaining process to bear witness. 
Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago, so give or take. Right. The investigator challenges an earlier assertion which remodels the discourse, and the suspect then starts defending her relationship with the victim. I really love him, like I do, and I feel like I can help him. He came a really long way, and he was trying. He was really trying. She somehow transitions into the principle of how she doesn't normally drink, and it's kind of only because of George that she drinks it all. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend. That's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously, prior that I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. What is happening? And I tried in every way. Shape. He had a bad memory. My memory was great. I, His was I, bad. He drank because I, bad memory. I'm a good person because I did I a lot of things. Sarah talks about George's anger management classes and the supposed progress he was making. And would always come home and show me his papers. How is this woman an adult? Together. She sounds like a like, child. Wow, you actually are learning like, this in we class? we played and did and puzzles? And some of the stuff that they would show them, like videos, he would come home and be like, Sarah, I'm and so sorry for what I've done to you. He changed. She's like, that's why you're still with him, even though he's done all these things to you. And when I tell you I love him, I love him. When you love somebody, you have limits. Everybody tells me that. <laughs> At, At least you're, point, you should. Gets enough. In the next moment, the detective will say, then they have to do something to defend themselves. Sarah's temperament will completely switch at the completion of this sentence. Then they have to, to do something to defend themselves. I would just flee. And I don't know if you would like to see on my phone or I think it's I think it's actually on a laptop. She explains how she once filed a restraining order against George, then for some reason brings Smart, up Smart, get them to search her laptop too. When I say a monster, she's a monster. Like it does she The interrogator lets her vent about the ex wife for two minutes. She will now bring the focus back to the investigation. Um since talking yesterday, do you remember any like time timelines better? Like what time uh, you guys were playing. What time you, he was zipped up in the luggage? <laughs> what the fuck? Why are they saying this like it's normal? Yeah, what a time were you guys playing? When were you guys? When were you guys goofing? Like, what are we talking about? This is a grown ass woman. Why are we using the word play? Like it's recess. What's going on here? Luggage. What time you I went told upstairs? You we started because we had we cleaned the house a little bit, did some laundry. She recalls the game starting at around 4 p.m. and her going to sleep at around midnight. So I have four and I have midnight, so there's a big gap. So She's curious, playing like, right now. If you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower or... Like when we started to play, hide mm -hmm. and seek. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we went inside probably about... I had to guess. We weren't, we weren't out there too long. Average um, criminal like you. Again, finished it. Started to paint. Well, started listening to music for a little bit. Started to paint. Uh, can we turn the music off? No problem. Started to talk, paint, whatever. I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, ugh, come on. Okay, you want to play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag, you're it. So it's like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. That's not how you play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have what you ever zipped him up in a suitcase? What is right? happening, no. dude? Okay. No. The suitcase originally is in our closet, buried all the way to the back. If you, I don't, I know the CSI people saw our closet. Our closet needs to be cleaned out really bad. My son's clothes need to be cleaned out really bad because they don't fit him anymore. Yeah, he sounded really pissed off she described so he hide and seek wrong. So upon himself, including that suitcase, to take it downstairs so we can get all of our clothes, our donations and everything, and just leave the whole thing by the clothing and shoe thing at my son's school. Gotcha. No, we're just, ask, I'm just asking yeah. out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not, but obviously no. I, I understand you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter. You were laughing, yes. he was laughing. 
But what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is it something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover, anything, any t photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <coughs> no. I um, think I took a picture of a dog. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. With regard to the colossal realm of interrogation footage, the level of notoriety these next moments acquired is virtually unprecedented. I feel like this picture belongs on a wall somewhere. Mm-hmm. you see it? Need to move it around. Just going to mute that. We'd really rather not hear that. Sarah may have been hoping that that was the end of it. Really can't say that I blame her for that. Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm -mm. Like it's not your own fucking video. Do I have to watch this? You filmed I it! I throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. You can either explain it, or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. Captions are... Daryl. She filmed it? Yep. So this is upside down. The interrogators should not be cutting each other off, but their missteps can be forgiven on this occasion due to the power of the evidence, which True. the lead detective will now focus on. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now he's obviously still in there. So he didn't, how did that, how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional alone. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? You were getting ready for bed. Just to be clear, Sarah still has no idea how screwed she is. She just referred to an that? earlier statement that she didn't lock up the suitcase all the way so George could get out. Stop here. Okay, but Where's here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out. It's and his head's right here. Mm hmm So going like this, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? I mean, it doesn't show. a joke. You, there's, there's no, no hole. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I... <laughs> the face of somebody who has no lawyer in the room. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. You've I'm done plenty. You, I'm just telling you what we see. I was going to say, they don't need you to say either. anything. They've, you've shown plenty. Know. He's begging to let, for you to let She's him already know. done it all for them, really. You sound... You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a, no, it's not malicious. Yo, what up, Boom? Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? My intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that. My intention was not to leave him in there. This video is at 11.12 when it starts, so was he in there for like a long time prior to No, it makes to sense, guys. It? it makes no. sense. No. I think we've all gathered by now that Sarah might be twisting the truth in her favor a little bit. I, she seems to I have really forgotten so, that two man. minutes ago she Definitely claimed not. to have no recollection of this incident. So her impeccable memory all of a sudden seems rather selective. But I didn't think that he was, like, panicky. I don't know. Maybe like, it was I, just the fucky-wucky guys. Maybe they were playing and she made an oingo Sarah, boingo. Sarah, Sarah, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one I mean, one given she's using baby language. Derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Please don't... I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but... <coughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me. The interesting thing about Sarah is that her intuition is correct. I don't want to be mean here, but it, I feel like you guys are accusing me of something. And I'm not sure what. But I feel like you guys might be accusing me of something here. <laughs> she sort of recognized. Duh! Yeah! What do you think? Playtime's over, bitch! 
recognizes what the police are doing here, but still has no idea of the ramifications. Her energy resembles that of someone who feels the police are about to start rumors about her. Like, no, I'm just trying to show you a video that you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to... He'll be up here any minute. Like she's but zombie you walked. You went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs. And get my pain wasn't bed. also to leave him. The in wine the took control. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs and then I fell asleep. Oh. But why didn't you consciously? Of course. Think, He's asking to come out. He I didn't do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <laughs> Well, I could be I so dumb, guys. By not zipping it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the and What was your plan? Waiting for him to come upstairs. I thought it was like, I thought he was okay. Like, I didn't. That, you he's all, telling you he's not. He's telling you, Sarah, I, I can't I, breathe. He's how did he even fit in that? Like, That's man. my name. Don't wear it out. It's got to be a big suitcase, or he's got, he, he had to have been a small man. I don't know how that's even possible. I'm thinking about how I could fit in a suitcase, and I don't even know how. It's probably a bit of both, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, it's not important. That's how we are with each other. The whole suitcase thing never happened before. Sarah tries to move on to another topic. Which makes it weirder, allow it. by the and way. Back to the specifics of the... She keeps bringing up that it's never happened, like that's helpful. But the fact that this happened the first, like, it makes it worse. She could argue that they did this often and that something went wrong. And that could be a terrible but usable argument in court. But she keeps saying that it's never happened, so you can't even argue it. You can't even argue that, like, this is, like, a regular activity and only her and the guy who's dead already are, like, the people who can vouch for that. She could have literally said that this is, like, a regular thing and she got too drunk and passed out. But no, she's burying herself further and further in playtime. She's gonna get detention real quick. <laughs> the evidence. Again, his head is closer to us facing the video, so we should be able to see fingers, and we don't see anything. We see no movement of him trying to unzip it or physically unzipping it. All we see is pushing up, trying to push out of it. Please do not assume. I mean, you put him in, so why didn't you take him out? <laughs> because I was upstairs and I fell asleep. There's no, a video. You like consciously had to walk upstairs. Do you, I mean, you what? What's being assumed? Bed, so time frame on that. Mm -hmm. and you it's on camera. That you I don't. My intention is not for this to happen. I am sick about it. Yeah, you I've seem really distraught. I've never done anything like this before in the past. I am sick. Don't have to. Anybody can kill. The lead interrogator starts playing the video. Takes as a bad Sarah day. Mid sentence, reiterating her innocence. Takes I a bad day and the right chance. No. Or the wrong one, I guess. I, I don't I, know. I mean, I don't know what you all. Depends on how you want look at it. To tell you because this was not in any This way woman real? I don't know, dude. But she's got the thought you process and maturity and of literally an eight-year-old. Like over. So you roll it. You roll it up. Like it's not like I didn't want to be like that. You didn't want him to be upside down? How do you even get upside down? Right. I you. I don't know how, I don't know how you want me to say it. I didn't mean to leave him in there. Okay. What's your but reasoning for um, not calling 911 sooner? Because I didn't know what to do and how horrific it was. I called Ryan and like what, five minutes later? I mean, she's going to jail regardless. Had she handled this interrogation way better by saying jack shit, her defense lawyer would have probably garnered a pretty decent argument to at least get manslaughter, which would have reduced her sentence by probably half. So she's probably going to get at least 25 years in prison, if not life. And if she had somehow been able to argue manslaughter, it would have been probably 10 with parole. So less. Maybe 15 with parole and gotten out in 10. This is why you get a lawyer. Here I called you guys. Not even five minutes. And it was Not that I'm upset this person did it. She deserves every year she's going to get from so this. But when he asked to be let out, like, what's your reasoning for not letting him out? When I was upstairs? No, when he's asking on the video. He asked multiple times. He asked to be let out. I can't breathe. What? Like, why didn't you let him out? Well, number one, I, 
Number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Okay. Number one. Okay. Genius. Uh, number two, just, you know what? I'll give you five minutes or so in there. That's, they'll give you five minutes or so. Five minutes for what? This was an absolutely imperative moment to allow the suspect to elaborate, but the lead interrogator cuts her off. Well, based off the video, one video is at 11, 12, and then Yeah, why did she cut her off? Let her, let her explain yeah, whatever the fuck that meant. Per video recording. So my, my thing is, when it's I mean, it's kind of a slam dunk, to be fair. Like, you don't have to, like... Why? why did you not let him out? It's just a simple I, question. She doesn't really yeah, need to give right. more, but giving more would make it easier. Don't Were you punishing him? No. <laughs> Just, well, that's what you're saying in the video. <laughs> um, this is what you got. This is oh. what you make. It's in the life. video. It's literally okay, bar for bar. On me. I will never drink alcohol again. Okay. I don't care what it is in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Thank God. I, wow. So let's get back to this. When he's begging for his life, telling you he can't <laughs> breathe. What a miracle. Out, and you say, fuck you. Why don't you just let him out? What are you trying I to don't... prove to him? <laughs> okay. Is that going to that gonna bring him back or... or? When he was asking to let be let out, and you're like, no, again, it's no. the boy calling wolf, and it's not. How when it's the first time you've ever done it? Doesn't the boy have to cry wolf a few times for you to not believe him? Yeah, I mean she's gonna have to quit alcohol because she's gonna go to fucking jail. I'm sure the toilet wine is great, but not fair. It is not fair. You guys are trying to again. Oh, he's in there. Night, night. He's begging for his life, telling you he can't breathe. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't. I didn't not asking you. mean for this to happen. But well, my question is, why didn't you just let him out prior to going up? I don't know why. He's begging to be let out. He's not laughing. <laughs> He's not having fun. So are you guys, so what is it you're trying to, like, we're just trying to figure out why. why? What are you guys, what are you guys getting at here? Explain, what are you... What are you trying to do here? Do you want to take a guess? <laughs> just just one guess maybe as to what they're trying to get at here? Guys, I don't really know what happens when when we die, but I would I would love if there is somehow a way to view and observe moments in time and and stuff like that. I I don't really know. I'd like to think there's ways we come back in certain ways, I don't know. But I would love if there is like some form of observation and we can like look and see stuff like spectator mode yeah i would love to like be in this room or be in her brain and just hear what her thoughts are saying in this moment in this interrogation because like how is any of this making sense to her i would just love to witness things you know what i mean you ever just like see a moment or read about something and you're like i would just love to have been there and just watched it happen you know what i mean i don't know something about it something about like just seeing an incredibly random moment in time generous to think she has thoughts her trial days in april what day the week of the 10th holy shit why what why will it be why? viewable why? for leaving him in the back why he was left in the back why did they I might have, have to watch that one it was me he and i having a great day Fooling around and being stupid. You know, that's a good analogy for the day, excluding the fact that he's got uh, a, a bump on the back of his head, a bump on the front of his head, and his lip is busted. And he has a oh bump on his eye. I, mean, I don't know what you all want me to tell you. Like, this is not fair that you all are assuming that that's from me. Where else did it come if from? If you were, say it's opposite, you were in the suitcase and you're asking to be let out, should they not let you out? In case somebody doesn't know it, I assume most people would just kind of a guess or assume. They can check, they can see a blunt force trauma to the head. They can measure the exact time it appeared. Just like we can measure the uh, an approximate time someone died. That's what they're saying. They're saying that these injuries weren't there prior to the incident. That's what they're saying. They're saying that they haven't analyzed the the trauma or the blunt force wounds and it does it and it's near his death mark or his death stamp. And it's pretty, it's, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Medical forensics is nuts. Or, like, forensics in general is crazy, dude. Like, even if you guys don't want to learn it yourself, you should look into how, like, forensic evidence gets done. It's, it's wild. Some of the ways we're able to figure out things nowadays is, is amazing. Eventually. I'm guessing. I mean, I don't. 
I'm blaming it on the wine. <laughs> blaming it on the wine? After talking to you... All right, arrest the wine. ...laughing and fun. Now we're watching a video where it's not laughing and fun. He's begging for his life, and you are in a very angry voice telling him to fuck off. Maybe the wine filmed it. It's not fair that you guys keep trying to say that that's what I did. And if he could push it open, why wouldn't he have gotten out himself? Why would he beg you to open it? Okay. I tell you, he can't breathe. Okay. If I, someone I, can I, do something for themselves, they're going to do it. They don't I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little attacked here. Lay hands on each other. No. <laughs> no. I don't have anything. Two of right. us, yeah. You're telling us that we're assuming stuff. But so she can't argue self-defense throughout that argument just now. What we're simply doing is telling you what we saw in the video and repeating what you told us. I understand. Because I don't remember that. Okay. Doesn't mean it didn't happen just because you don't remember it. Sarah now gets freaked out by the male detective. She thinks he's texting someone about her, which creates an absurd yet hilarious moment. So is the texting thing something about me? Like what's... Is the what? Texting? Oh, no, I'm texting. No, I... I, I have one last question. I just That's I, a great tactic. You, you realize you're the person that killed him, right? I thought about that. Okay, you left him in a bag when he's begging you, saying, I can't breathe, let me out. And you I've said, considered it me. was me. No, I died. Intentionally. You got up and you went up to bed. It's up in the air. You all? Please sit down. Listen to me. I did not. <laughs> Listen to me. And you went up to bed. You all? Please sit down. Listen to me. <laughs> I did not. You said. Not. Intentionally. Sit. <laughs> kill him. I got you on video screaming, fuck you. This is what it feels like when you're choking Here's the me. best part. It's There's the hammer. No towards it. You wouldn't say it if The hammer's coming it. down in the, in the interrogation the room. This is the best part. I didn't do that intentionally. Here comes you the squirming. You the back room? No. Why would I do that? Well, you Good question, you did. When he was upside down. Right. Well, you had to put him upside get, down. You can't get in a suitcase upside down yeah. because... <laughs> it had to been on its back with the lid open for him to get in there for you to zip it up. Then it shows it on the other side with him in it, so you had to flip it to there. Then there's another video where it's on his back again, so you had to flip it to I'm there. leaving it like this, please. I'm leaving it like this. I did not intentionally do this. You left them in there. You're trying to oh dance around the fact this is, you left them in there. This is not... I, you didn't leave them in not, there? It's not cool. Like, this is not cool. <laughs> you intentionally Guys, left them in there and left the room. Stop. You went upstairs to a different room. Stop. I would do anything for him. Well, you gave up checking up on him. So. I wouldn't let him out of the suitcase. Oh, gosh. Anybody looking at it, does, I don't think anybody so, would look at that video and go, George is having fun right now. The discourse repeats itself a few more times, and then Sarah brings out her list of questions. So, am I getting my phone back? No. Not today. Um, what about Lucas's laptop? No. Not today. Not today. How do I go about getting his um, wedding ring, engagement ring? It's at the medical examiner's office. It'll come to us eventually, and it'll then be, it'll be released to, oh, to, to the next with Kim. Yeah. Okay. I bought it for him. Okay. That is a civil issue. It was on his finger. It goes to them. They're the ones that are going to release it. We don't have any say in that. So I won't get that back. Oops, sorry. So what's next? They're going to come and swab your fingers. No, I'm talking about, like, in the long run. Like, what do I need to, like, do I need to be doing something or, like... Oh, my gosh, sorry. I mean, like, so, like, for, like, I don't understand, like, I don't know if you guys are just going to, like, I'm not admitting anything about being intentional, and I, like. We told you everything that we have. You know everything that we know. So, after this, what? Jail. I'm done? <laughs> and so, for me to have to live with getting him out and doing what I did is punishment enough. Nonetheless, I have to live without him now. Mm -hmm. His too. Poor me. I'm the victim here, guys. Are you trying to make it worse? Sorry, what? Are you trying to make it worse?
Yeah, fuck you. How dare you? How dare you? Make me feel bad. The investigators then returned. Okay, Sarah. So you're not free to go. Okay. This comment seriously puts Sarah on edge, but she still won't quite be fully aware of what's happening. This is coupled with the fact the investigators now try to get a solemn declaration out of her to close out the interrogation. The psychological dynamics of the moment are extraordinary. <laughs> you promise everything you told us was the truth? My turn. My turn. Or no. <clears throat> everything we've talked about today? Yes. What do you mean? The investigator explains that it's just protocol. Yes. Do you promise and swear that everything yes. is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge? No, he wasn't raising his hand. He was at, he was telling the lead investigator to make her swear on the truth or whatever. To the best Not of my fully necessary, sure. but another way to basically be like... Why? Basically, asking her that is to, like, force her to stick to a script during a court case. So, basically, by telling, making her admit that everything she is saying in this room is the truth... She can't change the story without having a way to excuse the story changing. She can't, like, deny the answers she made in the interrogation. She can't just, like, flat out flip script without that exact comment being brought into question. The male detective re-explains that it's just routine, only in a far more comforting tone. It's but not. the tone doesn't do a whole lot to reassure Sarah. She looks about ready to get swallowed up by a wormhole and take her chances in a separate dimension. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge. To the best of your knowledge. Everything that you've told us today is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Honestly, dude. Yes, but it was not intentional. Okay. Some days it just feels like that. Okay. Do me a favor, stand up. Y'all ever just want to warp into a different dimension and try again? Your pockets that I should know about. Why is this happening? What do you mean? Not intentionally. What's going on? So this was a trick. Am I arrested? You're right. You're right. Why is this happening? Because before y'all said I could leave. Yeah. They lied, like you. I don't, I this I don't this is exactly what happens happen. when you have no water, like, really bad, please. criminal justice competence. This is obscene privilege. The obscene privilege of this person An to just like take Sarah to the jail, but Sarah has questions. Think she can walk uh, out of a murder case is crazy. The holding cells? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna be pregnant one of those? I don't know. Last time I had yes. a panic attack. Okay. Let them know that. Yeah. I don't know. Go ahead, so what am I going to do with my purse? What made you all decide to do this? Made us decide to you! Uh -huh. George is dead. You! You guys, I knew this was going to happen. You did? Sarah was taken to the Orange County Jail at 5.44 p.m. She was charged with second-degree murder and held without bond, which keep in mind was in late February of 2020, just before the oh. entire planet went into lockdown due to a pandemic. So Sarah must have had a real fun time getting acclimated to the new environment. She's been in the county jail since, with a trial date set for April 10th of this year. She's currently working with her seventh attorney. Six have already filed motions to get the fuck out of there, and all of them <laughs> cited the same reason which was... <laughs> God, seventh trial date set for April 10th of this year. She's currently working with her seventh attorney. Six have already filed motions to get the fuck out of there, and all of them cited the same reason, which was irreconcilable differences. She has busted through seven lawyers. Holy shit. Wow. That is fucking crazy. And you know why? It's everything in this video. Her entire interrogation has ruined this case. Guarantee it. Because you know why? And I'm calling this now, and we'll see what happens. The trial date is the 10th. I would love to watch it if it's available. That lawyer will argue battered wife syndrome. I can't think of a different situation or a different argument that would be usable based off of everything that she has thrown out by what she said during the interrogation. That is the only thing I can think of that would be some ground to stand on and by some i mean like the small island and when you start skyblock in minecraft ground like that big that's the only thing i could think of that's what they're doing there's an article you just found about it being the argument that's the only thing she got rid of self-defense 
She got rid of accidental death by saying it wasn't a regular occurrence. She said that there was no defense wounds on her, so she can't do self-defense. She can't argue in, even that she was in fear of her life. She filmed it. I mean, everything. There's literally like no other thing that could possibly be an argument. The only thing that they're going to do in that court case is they're going to assassinate the victim's character and rely on the the abuse prior in order to uh, try to throw it out by saying that she was sick of the abuse and snapped, which is not out of the question, to be perfectly honest, given the amount, like given the history and, and potentially the amount. But um, it's going to be hard given everything that she did during and during the crime and, and during the interrogation. It's going to be a pretty impossible thing to argue. So I wonder if I can view that somewhere. I would love to actually watch that court case because that would be amazing.